This is experiment 19. That's related to chapter 12, chemical kinetics. In this experiment, we will be able to determine the rate, the initial rate of the reaction by measuring the change on the volume. This reaction is, uh, you have done it before in experiment 3. When you did the pop sound, you collected hydrogen in a small test tube. So this is the reaction between magnesium solid and hydrochloric acid. The magnesium solid plus aqueous hydrochloric acid is going to give you MgCl2 that's going to remain solid in solution, plus the hydrogen gas. Now the hydrogen gas, we will collect it, and we have explained in chapter 5 the method of collection, collecting gas over water. You have used it twice, once in experiment 3, when you did the pop sound experiment, if you remember. And another time, we used it in experiment 7, where we did the stoichiometry of a chemical reaction. You have collected the uh, carbon dioxide from the decomposition of, uh, I think, copper carbonate. Okay? Now, today, we will combine these two experiments together. So, we will react the uh, hydrogen, uh, the magnesium with hydrochloric acid, and we will collect, the same way we collected carbon dioxide, we will collect the hydrogen. Now, how this is going to help us? Usually, experimentally, if you want to study the rate of a reaction, we have said that this is the variation of the change on concentration versus the change on time. But technically, if you want to measure the change on concentration, it's not easy. Like, how can you, ch how can you measure the change on the concentration of a reactant in a solution? Technically, it's not, it's not simple technique. However, we can do that through, for example, change in color intensity. If you have, if you have a, a, a colored solution and the intensity is changing, so we, and this is, you are going to see it in the next experiment, the investigation 11. By measuring the absorbance of the solution, you can measure the concentration using beer lacquer plot. Or we can, we can track the change uh, of the reaction by measuring the change in volume of the gas, like we will do today. When you have a, a, a gas that's evolving out of your experiment, you can collect it and measure the volume, how it's increasing with time. Today, we will be studying the variation of the, the, of, of the volume for the gas evolving, which is the height. Now, for the experimental setup, it's uh, very simple, so I'll just need it. surface area of the magnesium strip. This is very important. We will make a spring. So we'll make a spring shape. You take your pencil and you just wrap it, wrap the magnesium strip around it and you will have a spring shape. 
like this one. So this will increase the surface area of the contact between the hydrochloric acid solution and the magnesium strip. Now, you will get your chronometer ready, okay? You open, you, you close it now, you open the hinge clamp, and now as you can see, the gas starts to form, okay? So you will be, it's going to take some time until that, a few seconds until that it starts. So now, every 30 seconds, you read the volume here that you are collecting, okay? So you will be waiting. Of course, the gas, as you can see, it's, it's forming. So now it's 30 seconds. You don't stop your chronometer. You just 30 seconds, so it's like here, say for example, 2.4 centimeter cube or milliliter. You write it down, you have a table where you can fill out this one. So you will be waiting another 30 seconds and you fill another data. Okay? You will wait for 5 minutes. Okay? So you will have your first uh, column filled in the table. You have to repeat this 4 more times. But what you will be changing, you will be changing the concentration of hydrochloric acid. So we will use a lower concentration. We will use 0 0.18, 0 0.16, 0 0.14, and 0 0.12. Now to do that, you have to prepare the dilution yourself. But it's very simple. You take for the 0 0.18, and this is indicated in your lab manual, you take 27 milliliter of 0 0.2 uh, hydrochloric acid, and you just simply add to it 3 milliliter of water. Okay? And then you introduce it to the uh, Erlenmeyer, and when you stir, they will mix up. For the 0 0.16, you will take 24, 0 0.2 molar HCl, and 6 milliliter of water. For the 0 0.14, 21, 21.9. For the 0 0.12, 18, 12. It's all written in your lab manual. Okay? And every time, you have to wait for five minutes, and you can you have to record the volume of gas forming. Okay. Now, when you lower the concentration of hydrochloric acid, so you are lowering the concentration of the reactant, and you should expect to see that the rate of the reaction should decrease. Okay. Now for for the Further explanation on how to determine the value of the rate, we will see it in the post-lab discussion. Reaction by 
drawing a tangent line that starts from zero and the slope of this line will give you the rate of the reaction. The rate at a time t0 is equal to the change of the volume over the change of the time. So how can you calculate the slope of this line? You can choose any point on this curve or on this uh, line and that's going to give you we'll call it V0 and T0 and the second point is going to be the 0, 0 okay? so that's why if this is going to be V0 minus 0 so V0 over T0 minus 0 so it's T0 so this way you can calculate the rate the initial rate of the reaction now if you want to calculate the rate of the reaction at any time you can pick your time so say now we will choose say for you guys this is two minutes okay and you want to calculate the rate of the reaction at two minutes you can simply take a tangent line okay at two minutes okay now, you choose two points on, on this line, so that's going to be T1, T2, and for each T1 you collected V1, and for the T2 you collected T or V2. So this is T1, T2, V1, V2. Now, this is going to give you, this will give you delta T. this will give you delta V so for example to calculate the rate at 2 minutes you can say rate at the time you chose it's equal to delta V over delta T so the first graph helped you to calculate the uh, initial rate of the reaction and then this one this way you can calculate at any time you, any time you choose to check whether the rate is slowing down or, or it's still the same now you have another table where you can calculate the log of the concentra initial concentrations of HCl you can calculate the initial rate the initial rate, as I explained, it is a slope at time t0. And you can calculate the log of the initial rate. Why this is useful for? When you calculate the, initial, the log of initial concentration, so you will be uh, uh, constructing a curve that is concentration versus initial rate. Okay, so rate R0 that you figured out from your previous data. Now that's going to give you, you will check the, the shape of the curve. If it gives you straight line, this means that they are linear. So this is, you check the order. But if it gives you something like this, this means that the order is not the first order. Now how can you figure out the order of the reaction? You all know that the rate 
is proportional to the concentration of the reactant, which is HCl, to the power n, and the n, as we said, this is the order of the rate, okay, of the reaction, and this can be only determined experimentally. Now, to determine the n, we can simply figure out log of R, it's going to be proportional to what? To N log of the concentration of HCl. So the plot, the line log of R versus log of HCl, which is a straight line, and the slope of this straight line it's equal to what? the slope is equal to n from the log of r versus log of hcl the slope of the curve will give you the, the order of the rate of the reaction as we said the order it could be fraction it could be a whole number.